Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to walk you through some of the basics of the OER LibGuide project, uh, which is essentially a, um, a gene splicing project. And so you can see on my table here that I've, uh, I've done a couple steps already. I printed out the, uh, the DNA sequence, uh, which is separate. Um, the plasmid sequence, which uh, if ideally you would do it in a different color paper, which I've done here. And then the restriction enzyme page. And then you're going to go ahead and, and cut all those out. And so you can see I've done that here. And I keep my strip. I keep the name at the top. And I cut it off flesh at the bottom. And I do that for both the sequence and the plasmid. And then you do it for your restriction enzymes. You can just cut around those as well. Make sure you keep the names on top because you'll need those. And now you'll have to put everything together uh, before you can do the second part. And so to do that, come back over here. Back away. You have to make sure you keep your strips in order. And so I have strip one and strip two. And strip two will just go on the bottom of one like so, and then you tape them together and you will continue on and do that for the whole strip. And this will make one long strip. And then when you do your plasmids, you will eventually wrap strip three back around to strip one. So we've got three strips here and we'll do one, two, and three, and then it'll wrap around to make a big circle. And so I'm gonna take a moment uh, off camera here and do those and then I will walk you through the next step. Okay, and now everything is, is taped together. Again, your enzymes are going to stay apart. You are going to have your plasmid in a loop. Uh, that's how it is in nature in bacteria. It's a small loop of DNA. And then you're going to have one long strip. You might want to do this um, like I did on a table or on the floor. So now you are ready to determine which enzyme of these eight that you are going to use to make the necessary cuts. And so you are going to have to compare them all to both. So we'll do the first one. And so you'll come down to the beginning. This is strip one. And you just set your enzyme next to it and you just move along one at a time until you find a sequence that matches up exactly to what you've got here on the left and right. So the left and right here will match the left and right on here. And I've actually already done this one. So again, you just kind of go down until you find a sequence that matches, which we have right there. And so then you draw a line with a pencil, just as I've done, that matches the line that's drawn on the enzyme. And then you label it. And then you will continue on for the duration of this. And I've only done one, but you could see this one time only. You could see it more than one time, two, three times. Um, the goal ultimately is to find the enzyme or enzymes that cut this strip at least twice. And if I come back here, you want to make sure, if I go along here, You'll see right there that it starts to be bold type. That bold type represents the insulin gene that we want to cut out. So we want an enzyme that cuts it up here somewhere, does not cut anywhere in the bold. If you're doing an enzyme and it cuts in the bold type, you can put it off to the side because it's automatically eliminated at that point. It's the wrong one. And so then, again, we go on to the end and bold type ends right there. And so our next cut cut uh, line needs to be after the bold type. So we'll do all eight enzymes. I'm not gonna do them all, but you will do all eight enzymes and you'll have your marks. And then you wanna find the one or ones. It's gonna be at least two, I will go ahead and tell you, that cut this once before the gene, the bold type and then once after the gene. Any enzyme that doesn't do that, that only cuts once, that cuts through the bold type, um, can be eliminated. Then you'll take those same restriction enzymes 
and move them and compare them to the loop. The loop is a little harder, but again, you just kind of run them along, start at the top of one and find your matches and draw those lines. And ultimately, let me spin this again, there are bold type areas here. See, the, that's replication origin, that's gonna be important. There's a question on that. That's antibiotic resistance, and there's an antibiotic resistance there as well. If any of the enzymes cut any of the bold on the sequence or the plasmid, you can eliminate it. And we want an enzyme that'll cut this one twice and this one once. It'll be the same enzyme in both cases. So if it is XMA, and I'm not gonna say it is or isn't, XMA would make two lines on this one, again, above and below the gene, and one cut here anywhere except through the bold letters because we need those intact for replication and isolation. All right. And so when you find that, you will actually make cuts uh, on the paper, which I'm going to do next. So I will be right back. Okay. And so after I identified my enzyme and made my lines, I went ahead and, and made cuts. And you notice they're staggered cuts. This point off here is known as a sticky end. And that is used to splice our gene into the plasmid. Um, the goal is to make again now one big loop. And so what you will do is not drop yours on the floor. There we go. Is you will tape these together. Now in yours, if you know your base pairing rules, you notice mine don't match up. I just made something up to show you kind of how the ends would look, but yours, the bases should line up and you will tape that into place and then you'll swing around and do it on the other end. Um, so go ahead and do that real quick and then I'll come right back and, and show you the end here. Okay, so I have taped everything together and so now what we have is one big loop and in essence, you are done at that point um, with the gene splicing portion. There are um, three pictures you need to take um, to send to me. Uh, You'll need to take a picture of your first splice. You'll need a picture of then your second splice and a picture of the actual enzyme that you use. So one picture of one splice, second picture of the splice, and a picture of the enzyme. Ideally, you would insert these and shrink them into a single page Word document. Uh, I know that doesn't always work, so you can, if necessary, submit the three pictures directly. Okay, there is another part of this I want to show you. It doesn't involve the gene splicing directly, but let me pause the video again and I'll be right back to show you how to fill out the table. Okay, the table, question number seven, table number seven. Um, you don't need the actual loop for it. You can use it. I usually think it's easiest to just reprint the DNA sequence. You do not need the plasmids. This is the same DNA sequence that we cut and tied together. But at this point, we're only concerned with the insulin gene. And so I've actually went ahead and used just a pencil to make a big mark to know where it starts. And then I came over here and marked when it stops. In addition, I didn't do them all, but I started making marks every three base pairs. So one, two, three, mark, one, two, three, mark, one, two, three. When transcription takes place, it works in groups of three to build the messenger RNA codon or the mRNA codon that you're going to use on your table. So if we take the first one here, we have ATG and TAC. And those on the table I've given you, I've already filled it in. You can see ATG and TAC. If you then use your base pairing rules to go from DNA to RNA, T is with A, A is with U, and C with G, you get AUG which I've done here, and I went ahead and did the second one for you, GCC, and I had you do one extra step yourself. So in the first one, I gave you the amino acid. I'll tell you how to get that in a second. On the next one, I stopped short, so you'll look this up, and then you can see uh, each time I gave you less and less until I gave you nothing. So that'll get you through the first four, get you started, and then you will pick up on your own. So number five on your list would then be ATG again. 
uh, which we had first, and it can repeat. Amino acids repeat all the time. And you would fill in your first two columns with what you have here, and then use your base pairing rules to fill in the messenger RNA codon. So it may be easiest to fill out all of column one and two, and then you go from two to three using your base pairing rules. And then you will go from three to four using the codon table, uh, amino acid table that's in your textbook. I've provided the number for you in the instructions. But if we go back here real quick, we can see our first mRNA codon is AUG. So we want those three letters. And so you can see here it says first letter, second letter, and third letter. So the first letter was A, so that brings us to this row here. The second one was U, and then you can see the G. So AUG is the codon that represents the amino acid that's abbreviated MET. It's methionine. Um, you don't need to know that, you just put MET in the table. So if you're watching this, we'll go ahead and do the next one, which is GCC. So we go over here, our first letter is G. Go to the top here, second column is C, and then we find GCC, and its amino acid is ALA, which is alanine. So over here in your table, you would put ALA, and then you would continue on. So for GAC, you would have CUG, and you would come over here and look up CUG, and that's LEU. So you would put LEU right there, that's leucine. And you would continue that throughout the entire table, both sides, all, I believe there are 59 uh, amino acids. I didn't print the whole table for this. Don't forget to put your name on it. And if you have any questions or want me to check any of your work uh, before you submit it, uh, go ahead and just send those to me and I will do my, my very best to answer them. Uh, do not forget questions one through six, those are answered through the lib guides, which the links are provided for you uh, under the project. Um, you can try and look them up online, but the, um, the easiest answers, they're, they're written from the lib guide project or the lib guides. Uh, and so that's where we would like you to go to get those answers because then you're guaranteed to get the answer we are looking for. So again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.